What is Tracheobronchomalacia? by Dr. Wendy Jo Svetnoff. Hello, my name is Dr. Wendy Jo Svetnoff, and I work with the esophageal and airway treatment team at Boston Children's Hospital. This is the first in a series of videos describing tracheobronchomalacia and potential interventions. In utero, the trachea begins formation during the fourth week of life, forming multiple rings that connect the back of the throat down to the distal airways. The anterior rings are made of hyaline cartilage, while the posterior membrane consists of smooth muscle. The trachea can be separated into three areas, with T1 located in the cervical area and extending to the clavicles. T2 can be found in the upper thoracic area from the clavicles to the aortic arch, while T3 is located from the aortic arch to the carina. The normal trachea takes on the form of a C-shape with a short, stiff posterior membrane that prevents collapse. An example of this is seen in the bronchoscopy picture on the right. In this bronchoscopy, you can see the nice C shape of the tracheal cartilages. The posterior membrane is short and firm, preventing collapse. Tracheobronchomalacia is a condition where the rings of the trachea and bronchus take on an abnormal shape, leading to laxity and collapse during breathing and or coughing. The estimated incidence is about 1 in 1,500 to 2,000 cases. However, the true incidence is unknown. Multiple factors can contribute to the development of tracheobronchomalacia, including genetic factors, collagen disorders, associated anomalies such as esophageal atresia, vascular malformations causing compression of the trachea, as well as chronic inflammation or complications from prolonged mechanical ventilation. When diagnosing tracheobronchomalacia on bronchoscopic exam, a patient has to demonstrate greater than 50% intrusion or collapse of the airway when coughing. With normal tracheal anatomy, the length ratio of the anterior cartilage to posterior muscle ratio is 4 to 5 to 1. In tracheomalacia, this ratio can be as great as 2 to 1, with the loss of the C-shape of the hyaline cartilages. This diagram illustrates the deformities that occur leading to tracheomalacia. Anterior compression is most often caused by a vascular malformation putting pressure on the trachea. Posterior intrusion is more dynamic, consisting of a longer, weaker posterior membrane that easily protrudes into the tracheal lumen with coughing. This can occur in one area of the larger airway, but can also be found in multiple areas of both the trachea and bilateral main stem bronchus. As the posterior membrane becomes larger, the cartilage used their C shape, first forming a U shape that is nicely illustrated in both the picture and the bronchoscopic photographs. Bronchoscopy shows U-shaped anterior cartilages attached to a longer posterior membrane leading to greater laxity and mobility. In severe cases, the cartilage takes on the shape of a bow, with the even longer posterior membrane being the string of the bow. With this anatomy, the trachea can easily collapse during forced expiration or coughing. Both the pictures and the video show the decreased tracheal lumen that is seen in patients with bow-shaped cartilage. Patients with tracheomalacia can present with a wide range of signs and symptoms, which can make the diagnosis challenging in some cases. Symptoms can include chronic cough, noisy breathing, recurrent respiratory infections, failure to thrive as a young infant or child, inability to wean from mechanical ventilation, multiple brewery episodes, which are brief, resolved, unexplained events that can lead to cyanosis, absent breathing, or altered level of consciousness, and limited exercise reserve. To best determine the therapeutic options for patients that are referred, we have followed the following algorithm. As noted, patients should be experiencing symptoms during the exhalation phase of breathing and have notable symptoms present, such as recurrent infections, persistent oxygen requirements, exercise limitations, and or episodes of cyanosis with altered levels of consciousness. If these are present, the patient will be scheduled for two tests, a bronchoscopy to evaluate tracheal anatomy with static and dynamic visualization of the airway, and a CT scan of the chest where specific focus is paid to the anatomy of the aortic arch, the great vessels, and the artery of Adamkowitz, looking for any malformations or compression on the trachea. The specially designed airway CT may show collapse of the trachea due to anatomic anomalies, but we have found that the 3D reconstruction of both the airway and the great vessels can give us a better roadmap to the areas that are most affected. To end this presentation, these two bronchoscopies show in real time the significant collapse of the tracheal lumen and the wide bow-shaped cartilages that are identified in patients with tracheobronchomalacia. Thank you.